Jordan McCracken Foster, and I am a teaching artist here at Art Prof. Today, I'm here with Deep D. Menon and the one and only Prof. Lou. And today, we are going to talk about uh, so, uh, social life at art school. And let's see, sorry. And if you guys are interested in turning your weakness into your strength artistically, then come check out our website where we have tons of tutorials and critiques that are 100% free for you to take a look at. And so today, uh, I want to start the question with uh, Deepthi and ask what her experience was like making friends in art school and especially the first couple of days. Um, the first couple of days are always really daunting. I moved cross country and I didn't know anyone. Um, although I did know my roommate because we had connected through, um, we had actually met at a college tour and then at another school and then um, we decided to be roommates. But what I found was really useful was leading up to joining, there were a lot of Facebook groups that we people were making and I decided to socialize on those over the summer. So I kind of knew people in the digital sphere when I came in, but I found what was really useful was um, hanging out with my roommate, meeting friends that she made. She was an international student, so she came a little bit earlier, but also working in like the studios um, after our classes ended because it's such a fun work environment. And um, Clara, I don't know if you have any experience with like working in the studios with your peers and if that led to a social aspect past a work aspect too. I mean, I was a big dork and never socialized in terms of going to parties or clubbing. I never did any of that stuff in art school. I was such a nerd. I just worked in my art in the studio all the time. And so really for me, my social life was the studio with other students. And honestly, those are some of my best memories of art school. It's just being in a dumpy little studio, somebody in the corner working on a self-portrait, I'm working on some foam board construction. And I just loved logging those hours with people because you don't have to talk the whole time. You can talk when you feel like it, but then you cannot talk for an hour because you're working. I mean, Jordan, I also think that there's an advantage to it other than the social aspect because you keep each other going. I mean, did you do that? Did you motivate each other, Jordan, when you guys were in the studio? Oh yeah, I relied on it um, because especially in my freshman year, I was so confused about a lot of the stuff that I was getting because the assignments weren't what I was used to. And so, you know, I would see someone who came from a completely different country or city or whatever, and I'd see how creative they were and I would, kind of I would get inspired by them and if I didn't understand something I would go to them and I would just make friends that way and especially as the first couple you know, semesters went on I really needed that because without that I don't know if I would have gotten as far or felt like I would have been as motivated to stay on the path you know so. Yeah, I also feel like in the studio environment, um, when you're like a freshman, especially the critiques can be really daunting. Um, your first couple critiques in the first couple of weeks, but if you're in the studio and you're working on the work that you're about to present and you're around your peers and you're able to get feedback, I felt like that was such a valuable tool because I it was kind of like a prep for going into the actual critique and you're able to like learn about the people who in the like in the actual critique are going to give you this feedback and it's nice to humanize everyone and be like oh you know they are people too and then get feedback from them prior to it so it felt like a nice balance between socializing um and like the work aspect of it if that makes sense <laughs> i mean i do think that for a lot of people the first couple of weeks it's going to be awkward because it's a new school nobody really knows each other that well and I always tell students the first day of class, guys, don't work by yourself. You're gonna go crazy because a lot of these projects, they're not quick projects. I mean, Jordan, how long did my drawing assignments take? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Uh, it took me all night for several of them. <laughs> uh, it, took a, it took a long time. And uh, it, you know, it was always the worst when you're working with someone who who's in your class and they get to go and sleep early because they're done. I always hated that. It's like, no, my only friend. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were you were my outlet, and now you're gone. I hated that. That was the worst. And then I'd see them all come to class all early, refreshed with their cup of coffee or tea or whatever, and they're just like, <laughs> and they're waiting to get the critique, and it goes super well. And I'm sitting here like like a zombie, like, oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I have many of those memories. Not just your class, Claire, but like a bunch of them too, so yeah. <laughs> well, and that, that's just really important to have those people in the studio with you because what a lot of students will do is they don't think to do that at first when they get to art school. They just say, oh, I'm gonna do my project. I guess I'll sit in my dorm room and work on the self-portrait. But the people that end up doing that, number one, you're really isolated and you're in a room by yourself, maybe all night for many, many hours, and you don't get any feedback. And so what I say to the students, look, you don't even have to go to the studio with people, just work in the studio. And if everybody comes to the studio, inevitably a bunch of people are gonna show up. So you don't have to be good friends with people to be working with them. And that's really nice because some people think that, oh, we need to like make plans. You don't, just go to the studio. Don't work in your dorm room. I mean, Deepti, did you work in your dorm room or did you go to the work rooms? What did you do? I went to the work rooms or the studio. I rarely worked in my dorm room because on top of everything, it's like messy, you know, and I don't want to bring that into my dorm. But I found that like going back to the socializing thing, working in a studio environment with other people, you oftentimes become friends with people that you maybe wouldn't have naturally been drawn to just by looking at their work and you notice that there's something similar because you're often working in a workroom with people who are going into majors that are different than yours or, um, aren't in your studios and you just happen to be in the same workroom together and you see something that they're doing that, or they're using a technique that you'd like to learn and then you form this conversation and then suddenly you're building this network. And I think that kind of leads me to a question. Do you guys think, um, or Jordan, I'll pop this towards you. Do you think it's important to make relationships with people who are um, not like interested in the same things as you or like not in the same major as you or do you find that it's more beneficial to stay within your interest in your major? Uh, you know, I, I actually like branching out and having friends from different majors for a number of reasons. One of them is because you get different perspectives on things um, and you get to learn. You know, if, uh, if, if I have a friend who's like in jewelry and metalsmithing or something like that, which I've never tried, never had any particular interest in it myself, but seeing something that my friend could produce, I could just learn a whole lot about that. Uh, the other thing is, I just think it's good to be with as uh, have as many friends as possible, and you know, when you never know when that's going to pay off in the long run. Like, and it's just being a good person. You know, if you're going to suddenly put up a wall because they're not in the same major as you and not want to be their friend, I feel like there's something there's something a little iffy about that. And so, my first friends were all from all different majors, um, and I still talk to a lot of them. Just wanted to note the super chat. Thank you so much for this. This really keeps us afloat and helps make Art Prof possible. So thank you, thank you. I also wanted to show this funny comment. As Art Prof takes over the art world, it may be a place to meet people who may be attending the same school and help make friends. Um, that's true, but it also might be a great place to, like Jordan said, branch out and uh, meet people who aren't like necessarily aligned with you in the same school or otherwise. And, um, do you guys feel like, at least in this, you know, COVID world that we're living in, do you find that um, it would be good advice to branch out past like the physical realm and find that socializing in art school through the internet? Clara, what do you think? It's tricky because there are not a lot of trusted spaces online right now that I know of, of art school students other than, for example, the Art Prof Discord, which you should all join because that's where the cool people hang out. But I think a long time ago, Deep D and Jordan, when you guys were freshmen, Facebook was still a thing. And so there mm -hmm. would be these SVA class of 2015 Facebook groups, but it seems like those have largely disappeared. I feel like a lot of the students I know who are going to be freshmen in the fall they told me they're just DMing people over Instagram now. And it doesn't seem like there are these groups like there used to be on Facebook. I could be wrong. And if anybody in the chat is going to art school in the fall, first year, second year, whatever, if you know of a particular space online where art school students are congregating outside of Art Prof, let us know because we're always trying to spread the word about that. But yeah, it feels like everything's migrated to Instagram now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. When I first starting, uh, I remember being in a lot of those Facebook groups as well and making friends that way. Uh, every once in a while, I'll go to like a convention. I'd make friends with someone who was like in line with me or whatever. 
Um, but nowadays, I think it is kind of on Instagram and you just, you know, there, I've been DM several times by people who just want to be art, art friends or whatever, or just ask a couple of questions. Every once in a while, I might get someone who I knew from childhood and they go like, I have a friend who's in my school, you know, in Washington, DC, and they like to do art sometimes. And maybe you could, you know, can I connect you to? That's happened before too. Well, it's such a different world now because in the olden days, <laughs> before the internet, we didn't know who our teachers were. It would just say like F Smith. And we're like, okay, that's our professor for the semester. And you literally didn't meet anybody until you were physically on campus. And now because of COVID, a lot of schools are not even going to be on campus. I know Harvard and MIT, they've already announced that they're gonna be 100% online. So actually, Deepti, do you think it's true that maybe now with COVID, most people are gonna connect online before they meet in person? And do you have concerns about that? Or maybe that's easier. I think I think it's definitely going to happen because um, you know what other options really are there. Um, you can't really meet people anymore. Um, it does feel you know ups not upsetting, but like it, it does kind of um, make me sad in some senses because it is nice to have like a group critique format or like meet people and be able to physically see each other's work, but. Then again, you know, so like we do live in a time where we're lucky that this uh, we have the Internet and we're able to connect online. And I do think there is some value like, you know, we have FaceTime now. And I think during the pandemic, it's for me, it's even been nice to FaceTime my friends who are across the country or even down the street who I can't see um, and, you know, do an art hang together just to catch up. And it's so different than even when I was in high school when FaceTime wasn't a thing. Um, Jordan, do you find that you're like, you know, using the internet more as a socialization tool now that we are in this pandemic? And do you think that's useful for incoming students or students who are continuing their college education in the fall? Yeah, you know, me personally, I feel like I've always kind of used the internet to connect with people. <laughs> so it's not a huge difference for me. But, um, but I do feel like I need it much more now because I, I'm one, I'm very I'm a very social person and I like being around other people especially when it comes to art and so if I'm just sitting here in my in my studio all day in my room and just working I crave that you, you know that uh, socialization so I'll call friends and and you know whether it's FaceTime or whatever and I think during the fall semester and you know what as long as we're in quarantine essentially that that's something that everyone is really going to need because part of the thing about art is you having community makes it so much better and you know we talk about a lot of artists on here who were kind of loners <laughs> in that way uh and they didn't you know they had a tough life but i feel like just having people around you to support you is always a better option uh this is a fun comment i had a younger friend tell me facebook is for old people apparently we're old jordan oh my gosh claire i know you're constantly talking about how you feel old even though you're not but that's funny. And then this comment is great. It's my besties in art school were in a totally different majors. We became roommates and we're still besties, even though they live in a different city now. Um, that's great. I had the same experience. My roommate all four years was in a different major. We had nothing in common artistically. Um, but I'm curious, do you, f I, I find that one of the best parts about being friends with people who are in different majors and have different interests is actually when you graduate, it leads to um, opportunities in professional development and networking. Clara, did you find that to be true um, when you were in school and then when you graduated? Oh, it's so different, you guys. Once you've been out of art school for, I'd say, 15 years or so, you really start to see that develop. Because you know, when you first get out of art school, nobody has a job yet, nobody's in charge of anything. You're all starting from the bottom and going up. But then a decade passes and it's like people start getting pretty significant jobs and you start hiring people. And who are you gonna hire? You're gonna hire the people who were standing behind you in the cafeteria in college. And so it's very weird because when I talk to freshmen, they're 18. And I say, you know what, that person who you were standing in the elevator with just now, they could be on the search committee that hires you. And it just sounds so bizarre, but it is. I mean, Jordan, has that ever happened with you where it's like people you never would have thought actually came in handy later on? 
Uh, well, considering I have not been out of school for 10 years, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, you know, preface it by saying that, but there are certain people who I graduate with or I knew during my time in art school who are working at places that I would like to work at. And I've reached out to one or two of them and I'll say things like, hey, you know, I sent my, my application in. If you hear my name buzzing, and I always go like, you know, my name's pretty uncommon. So it's, you know, McCrack and Foster, you don't hear that ever and so if you hear that just you know put in a good word for me i'll do stuff like that all the time and <laughs> uh, you know that i think that's awesome when that's what happens yeah there are a couple um tips in the comments this part uh, scott is saying that group me is an application that they used when they were in school i've never heard of that have either of you heard of group no. me? but perhaps something for the community to look at and then um this comment is saying that um whatsapp is a good tool. And that actually makes sense because a lot of times international students prefer WhatsApp and it's a good way of connecting. So those are two great tips from the community. Thanks guys. I also want to point out in terms of the professional segue going from a student to a professional situation, you do not have to be really good friends with people to have that professional connection later. Because there were people I went to art school with I knew them, they were in my class and we'd say hello, but we were like barely acquaintances. And then I would get in touch with them 15 years later because they thought of me for some professional reason. I was like, really? I didn't really know you that well. And yet you're giving me a hand. Like everybody's so nice after school. It's really, really a good thing. So don't underestimate who you meet in the cafeteria. It, it might get you a job someday. It sounds strange, but it really is true. I now, think I'm wondering- also Sorry, I was just gonna say that it it also like as being on the side of like sometimes I've hired people or um, recommended people for jobs. It makes me feel a lot more easy recommending someone who I've you know watched in the studio or spent some time with than just reading a resume. And like I've learned so much about just how much easier it is to get a job or even get your foot in the door if you have a personal connection and art school, if you're lucky enough to go to art school, is such a good way of making those initial connections. I mean, we're talking right now about a lot of the benefits of socializing in art school and how it really can enhance your academic experience or professional life. But there are some parts of social life at art school that are not easy to navigate. And I know, especially at RISD, where I taught for many, many years, there was always this competition for who slept the least, who stayed up all night. And that I find is quite toxic. So Jordan, why does that happen? Why do people get competitive about that as if it gives you bragging rights because you pulled an all nighter? You know, I wish I knew the, the full on answer because it's so unhealthy to not get any sleep. And I'm one of those people who love sleep. Uh, I think part of it is especially when you're in a new environment, you just want to do your best. And I think people associate doing their best with working the longest. And that oftentimes leads to not getting any sleep. And when you see that one person who's constantly getting good critiques and you know they didn't sleep all night to get to their results, then you start to think, oh, well, maybe if I lose sleep, then I can create work like this student. And then it just creates this social, socially toxic environment where everyone's sleep deprived. and I remember actually, I was in the cafeteria one day and I saw this girl wearing a shirt or a hat, maybe it was a hat, and it said RISD, but it said reason I'm sleep deprived as the afternoon. <laughs> and I was like, dang, I don't know where to get that, but man, it's accurate right now. <laughs> so I don't know, Deepti, what do you think? Yeah, I think what you said kind of hits it right on the nose, which is like, I, sometimes I feel like the amount of time you put into something is directly correlated with its worth, which I don't think is true um, because everyone works at different rates and has different processes. Um, so, and also it's kind, of, it's kind of like what you said, Jordan, sometimes like when you're in the workroom and you see someone that's in your class working for hours and you're like done, you're like, should I stay longer? Like they're still here. Um, but what I think we need to recognize is that, you know, your mental health is, so important also and you're not going to be making your best work if you're not taking care of your physical and mental health um and i think that kind of leads us into socializing in art school that just has nothing to do with art like what Cl clara were your favorite ways to just decompress and take a step back i mean for 
me, we always had these movie nights at the RISD auditorium. It was great because it was free and it was right there on campus. And I just like that time to just not be in my life for two hours. I mean, I was not watching Michael Fassbender movies back then, but I don't know. I was probably watching Aliens or something, <laughs> something that was like scary because I like that stuff. But um, I think you have to recognize that you need that time. You need that headspace. In fact, I do that now sometimes when I'm thinking to myself, I'm really tired. I really should go to bed. But actually, I need the mental space more than the sleep sometimes, if that makes any sense. Like, I'll stay up an extra 30 minutes to watch Jane Eyre. But it's like I need that space, right? Sometimes that is more important than the actual sleep. Now, you have to figure out... <laughs> in your circumstance, which one you need more? Do you need the mental space or do you need the physical sleep? And sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to pick. But Jordan, I know for artwork especially, you've got to be able to step back. I mean, has that helped you to have that mental space to disconnect? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, since since my sophomore year at RISD, um, I always made a point to take a day off, take a 24 period off of homework and art and everything like that from uh, Friday to Saturday. And that was always the highlight of my week when I would, you know, I would just be tired and wait, maybe I had a really bad week with critiques and nothing was landing. And then I would start to see the sun go down Friday. I'd be like, all right, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to go get dinner and I'm going to sleep. Bye. And I would leave and everyone would be like, where is he going? Like, what? And everyone would be like kind of lost. And, and then I'd come back right, you know, uh, right in bushy eyed on you know, on Sunday morning and just be like, all right, let's do this. And uh, I, I relied on that. I think that helped me so much because I, you, you need to hit the reset button. And I think constantly just, you know, exp you know, using all that energy on, on your work at some point, something's got to give, you can't, you're, you're not a robot. You're not meant to be a robot. And so that's why I, as much as I don't always get a full night's sleep, I always recommend that people do it. <laughs> Definitely. I like this comment that says, we used to reserve a space and put on dances and spend weeks beforehand making a playlist together. I like that idea of like forming a group together and finding a way to still work together and socialize, but do something that's completely different than, um, you know, what it is you're normally doing together. That's like a great way of still keeping your community, but pivoting what your focus is on. Um, yeah. And also, that's not to say you can't decompress in a way making artwork. Like I never did this because it was not really part of my generation, but Deep Dean and Jordan, both of you guys have told me, I guess you guys call it an art hang. Is that what it is? Where Deep Dean, you're on FaceTime and I guess you guys draw? You gotta explain this to me, Deep Dean. I don't understand how it works, but for people studying remotely, it's a great option. So what is this art hang thing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like, I mean, it, it goes back to, I mean, it's something that kind of came out mostly in COVID, but it goes back to my art practice in school is like, a lot of times with my studio mates, we would hang out and we would go to the park or we would go to the beach or something. But inevitably, as artists, we all have our sketchbooks on us and we would just hang out in a space, maybe silent and just draw together and enjoy each other's presence. And um, now as a professional adult who I, all my friends are across the globe, one way of catching up, but also doing something that reminds us of our time together is to hop on FaceTime, but also, um, you know, draw together and share our work together and have like, even like, you know, draw each other's faces or just go outside and FaceTime and draw outside together. And I think that's a great way of like, for me at least, sometimes um, ske sketching is fun, but at a certain point, you're kind of like, I, I like doing it with other people and being able to share it. And in this pandemic, I feel like a lot of students probably feel that way. And um, doing things over FaceTime might be a great way of sharing it and getting critique even um, and finding other ways to just naturally have a fulfilling artistic community. Um, what do you think, Jordan? Yeah. Uh, so what I do is I, I will go on Facebook and I'll hit up like two or three of my friends and I'll say, hey, guys, I'm bored. You guys want to draw? And uh, we'll get in a group video chat. And, and usually we're working digitally, not all the time, but sometimes we are. And we'll just share each other's screens and we'll just show each other what we're working on. Sometimes it's comics, sometimes it's animation, uh, just a illustration or figure drawing, whatever it may be. And we talk uh, about whatever's going on in the world. Uh, right now, there's a lot of things going on. So there's never anything uh, to, you know, we always have stuff to talk about. 
and we just hang out for a couple hours until one of us gets bored or we have to leave or whatever. And uh, I think it's a great way to socialize and just even staying in touch with old friends or just staying motivated because sometimes you just need that group of people to remind you that you're not insane. Um, well, and I can also say that for a lot of the schools that are going online or hybrid in the fall, even if you're both physically on campus, you may not be able to physically hang out together all the time. So maybe this person lives a block away from you, but you still have to do an art hang because of the social distancing. So I feel like this art hang thing, whatever it is, whatever the young kids are doing, I think it could be very effective, even if you are physically close by, because I know a lot of schools are gonna place a lot of limitations about how people can interact outside of the classroom and everything. So that's a good thing that I think people can fall back on. Now, another thing I wanna bring up that is probably not as relevant right now, but will be hopefully when things settle down more with the pandemic, I don't know that a lot of students realize that in college, it is okay to get a cup of coffee with a former professor. I don't do that with students when they're in my class because I think that that's favoritism and you don't wanna do that because I think it makes a lot of people feel really bad. But Deepti, if you were in my class in the fall semester, you could totally come to me in the spring and say, oh, I wanna catch up and show you what I've been doing. Can we go get a cup of coffee? That is totally appropriate. Now in high school, it's not because people are minors and in college is a different thing. And Jordan, I don't know a lot of students think to do that. Do you, I don't know, what's your thought? Yeah, um, I, I guess it really depends on the student for one, because there are times where students are just kind of wallflowers and they just stay quiet the whole time. You don't really know what they're thinking. But I noticed for a lot of the students who really appreciate their teacher, especially like, you know, there are some teachers and students who you, you know, you feel like you're closer to more than others. And I noticed that they'll build up relationships. And uh, I think that, I think that's always really cool because you can rely on them for professional advice oftentimes, and they'll give you the real deal and they won't sugarcoat anything. And when you have access to information like that, you don't have to just, you know, go do a random Google search. And, you know, you, I feel like you get that firsthand experience from someone who you understand, you know, and when you get that, it's always so much, uh, so much better. And you gain another friend that way. And who doesn't need another art mentor, you know? <laughs> yeah, and also like your professors know so many people. Again, it's just all about networking. And I remember when I was a senior and I was about to graduate and move to New York, I asked for this cup of coffee with so many professors, especially those who I knew had some time in their professional life working in New York City, just to talk about like, how do I get an apartment? How do I afford an apartment? Like there are all these people who are in general, at least a couple years older than you, but have more experience. And like, instead of just moving to a city blind, I was able to ask all these questions. And from that, I was able to get contacts at studios and companies and, um, you know, be put in touch with people who could help me. And I think it's a lot of that um, initial, like, connection has to be made with the student making the first um, attempt. Because, again, like you said, Clara, you don't want to be playing favorites and being like, hey, if you ever, you know, want to get a cup of coffee, that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, like, no. Um, so the student has to make the effort. And, um, but I think more than like speaking as a teacher perspective, I haven't been a college level teacher, but I would assume that I would, I would enjoy doing that. Cause at the same time, like teachers and can learn from their students and they provide a wealth of knowledge as well. So I think it's really useful. The only time, honestly, that I would say no to a student who wanted to have a cup of coffee with me is if I truly did not have time. That's the only time I would say no. Because even if it's a student I don't connect with that deeply, I'm on campus. I feel that that is a part of my role as a professor to be speaking to students outside of just the classroom. And so if you're a college student, it's okay to do that. And worst case scenario, they say I'm busy. I mean, that's all that will happen. Um, there are a lot of comments about people watching this video being super introverted. And this one is saying, I would have been way too intimidated to ask any of my profs to grab a cup of coffee. Clara, as a college level professor, um, do you have any advice for a student who maybe would want to grab a cup of coffee with you, um, but would be too intimidated? What's your take on that? 
Well, it depends on the professor, but the first thing I would do is just reach out. Don't even say, I want a cup of coffee right now, tomorrow at eight. You just reach out to the professor, send them an email. And actually this happens to me a lot. And Deepthi, you and I and Lauren, we did a stream yesterday about when you can't relate or connect to your professors and you're having a hard time in their class. A lot of students do that with me. They'll reach out to me and they'll say, listen, I'm having a really hard time with this design teacher who have any advice. And most of the time, if I'm not crazy busy, I'll say, you know what? Let's get together in person and talk about it because I can't really discuss this very well over email. And so I feel like in a lot of situations, if you reach out, the professor will usually suggest, you know what, let's get together and chat about it. And so then there's an appropriate way for me to connect with the students because even if you're not in my class, I still would never say, Jordan, let's hang out on Saturday. <laughs> that's not cool. Like you have to really respect your boundaries and I'm very uptight about it. I mean, I'm so uptight about it that actually when I taught at RISD, I had this personal policy that I would never sit in a room with a student with the door closed. That was my policy because I never wanted anything to be misinterpreted. And I had a student once who was so cute. She was getting very emotional the last day of class. And she said, Clara, do you do hugs? I'm like, okay, I, because it's in front of the whole class and we're all crying right now, it's okay. But you have to respect boundaries. And I just, as a college professor, you gotta be careful about that stuff for sure. I don't know. I mean, Jordan, I get that intimidation, but I feel like as a student, you really have to try to not be so intimidated because you're missing out on opportunities if you are too afraid to ask for help. So do you just bite the bullet and just ask, Jordan? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So so as we've been ta talking, I've been thinking back on my experience and I feel like in my undergrad, I was, I was very introverted and I was very shy and I would, I was one of those people who would be intimidated to ask uh, a teacher to go get, you know, some coffee or something like that. And I think when I went to grad school, it just started to shift because I was like, you know what, they're here to help me. And I, if I'm going to go in the industry one day, these guys, have, these guys have their names around, like people know who they are and it can only help. Like what the, the worst thing that could happen is you go through an art school experience and you come out with pretty much no one to help push you forward. And I think by building those relationships with people, that is gonna help your career inevitably. And so, yeah, I, I would just bite the bullet or what I would do if there was a quiet moment in class and it wasn't meant to be a super serious, like focused environment. I would joke with the teacher. We would talk about random stuff like movies we liked or music or whatever the case may be. And I always just enjoyed that time. Um, so, so yeah. But. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, also, it doesn't have to be a cup of coffee. Like if that feels weird and potentially like drawing a line of like, is this a date or like something really weird? Because the coffee can't always be misinterpreted. You know, you can always just be like, hey, I'd love some professional advice. You know, do you have office hours or could we grab a cup of coffee or have a moment to talk things over? Like make sure you're framing it in a way where um, you're not making the teacher be like, huh? <laughs> um, so, you know, like, and if that is the reason why you feel intimidated, because you don't want things to be misinterpreted, you can always frame it in a way that's like, hey, I have questions about X, Y, and Z. Can we find a time to talk in whatever environment you prefer? Right. Or you can do what Jordan did, just drop by. I mean, <laughs> I love it. When students just show up and they're like, hey, just wanna say hello, like that's totally cool. And honestly, Jordan, I really think if you had not stopped by, I'm not so sure we would all be here right now. I mean, that's, how critical such a small encounter is. So what made you drop by, Jordan? Because you didn't even tell me, you just showed up out of the blue and were like, hey. To, to be honest with you, I don't even remember doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't, if, if I were to guess, it was because I saw the door open and I saw that you were in the, in the illustration building and I had a free moment and I just was like, hey, what's up? Because I'm one of those people that likes to connect with, you know, friends or people who I knew or things like that. And I think that that's probably what I was thinking. But that interaction, I don't know if I can pinpoint exactly when that was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like this comment because it's about a group of friends making this relationship with a teacher. And that's also a really great way of if you're kind of intimidated to do it 
one-on-one, -on -one, you can always see if a teacher would be down to, um, you know, get a cup of coffee with two and three of your friends and then kind of all of you um, ask questions and share knowledge. So that's a cool way to do it too. And speaking of sharing knowledge, everyone, we have uh, some of our podcasts up on Spotify if you want to listen to us give some more advice. And we also have some of our podcasts up on Apple Podcasts and you can leave us a rating and a review. I think that'd be really awesome for you guys to check out. And in about five to 10 minutes after the stream, we would love for you guys to join us on Discord in the post live streams channel where you guys could ask us more questions and we could talk about some of our experience that we didn't get to talk about today in the stream. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon for further notifications. And last but not least, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, all these names who are here. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. And we can't do our prof without you guys. So let's help uh, help everyone to keep the, uh, let me put it like this. Let's keep this number growing. And uh, for everyone else who joined the stream, thank you. And we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Take care, everyone. Bye.